Well, we get an allowance of $27 a week, mm -hmm. and uh, that's to do with, like, uh, say, cat beer or hamburger. So, Green. candy. <laughs> candy. <laughs> Discover the untold story behind the legendary Frankie Lyman that left talk show hosts reeling and audiences stunned. While his music captivated hearts, there's a hidden and controversial side that led to his unprecedented ban from every talk show circuit. Delve into the depths of fame and its consequences as we unravel the mystery behind Frankie Lyman's fall from grace. From his meteoric rise as a teenage sensation to the shocking events that shook the entertainment industry, no stone is left unturned in this gripping tale. Explore the scandals, the secrets, and the startling truths that forever changed the trajectory of Lyman's career. In this captivating journey, we'll peel back the layers of fame to expose the tumultuous reality lurking beneath the surface. Prepare to be immersed in a narrative that challenges perceptions and sheds light on the darker side of stardom. Join us as we unravel the enigma of Frankie Lyman and uncover the shocking reasons behind his exile from the talk show circuit. Brace yourself for a roller coaster ride through fame, fortune, and the hidden controversies that haunt one of music's most iconic figures. In the late 1950s, Frankie Lyman became famous as the lead singer of a group called The Teenagers. They were a vocal group known for songs like Why Do Fools Fall In Love. Frankie's voice was special, and people loved listening to him sing. Frankie Lyman was young when he started gaining fame. He had a charm that captured people's hearts. People liked him not just for his voice, but also for his personality. The teenagers, with Frankie as the lead singer, had hit songs that made them popular. Why Do Fools Fall In Love was one of those songs that everyone seemed to enjoy. It had catchy tunes and lyrics that people could relate to. Frankie's rise to fame happened quickly. People noticed his talent, and he became a star in a short time. He was just a teenager himself when he became famous, which made him even more special to his fans. His success wasn't just about his singing. Frankie had a style and energy on stage that captivated audiences. When he performed, he brought joy to people's hearts. But fame at a young age can sometimes be challenging. Frankie had to learn to deal with the pressures that came with being in the spotlight. It wasn't always easy for him, but he continued to perform and share his talent with the world. Sadly, Frankie Lyman's life had its struggles, and he faced some difficult times. Despite this, his music continued to inspire people for years to come. Frankie Lyman gained early success and rose to fame as the lead singer of The Teenagers, a vocal group known for hits like Why Do Fools Fall In Love. His youthful charm, exceptional vocal talent, and energetic performances propelled him to stardom in the late 1950s. At a tender age, Lyman experienced exploitation in the music industry. Even though he was young, record companies and managers used his talent and lack of experience to their advantage. They didn't give him much say in his career or money matters. Lyman's situation isn't unique. Many young artists face similar challenges. The music industry can be tough, especially for newcomers. Record companies and managers might promise big things, but they don't always deliver. They might take advantage of the artists, not giving them fair deals or proper support. One way they exploit young artists is through contracts. These contracts can be tricky and confusing. Artists might not understand all the terms, and they might not have anyone to explain them properly. As a result, they could end up signing something that's not in their best interest. Financial exploitation is another issue. Artists might not get their fair share of the money they make. Managers and record companies might take a big cut for themselves, leaving the artists with very little. This can make it hard for artists to make a living from their music. For example, managers might take a big chunk of the money earned from concerts or record sales for themselves, leaving little for the musician. Promoters might promise big paychecks for performances, but then only give a small portion to the artist. These practices can leave musicians like Lyman feeling cheated and struggling to pay their bills. Financial exploitation isn't just unfair, it can also have long-lasting effects on a person's life. 
Without enough money, Lyman may have had trouble affording basic necessities like food and housing. He might have also felt stressed and worried about his future. Exploitation in the music industry can also affect an artist's creative freedom. They might be pressured to make music that's not true to themselves just to sell more records. This can be frustrating and demoralizing for artists who want to express themselves authentically. This can be a real issue, especially for young and inexperienced artists like Lyman. It's important for artists to be aware of the risks and take steps to protect themselves and their careers. Although Lyman's rapid ascent to fame catapulted him into the spotlight, it also introduced him to the dark underbelly of the music industry. The pressures of maintaining his status as a teenage heartthrob weighed heavily on him, and he sought solace in drugs from an early age. Lyman's struggle with drug abuse began as a coping mechanism, a way to deal with the overwhelming stress and expectations placed upon him. Initially experimenting with recreational substances, he quickly found himself ensnared in the grip of addiction. Cocaine, heroin, and various other drugs became his constant companions, providing temporary relief from the demands of his career and the insecurities that plagued him. However, the euphoria induced by these substances was short-lived, and Lyman soon found himself trapped in a vicious cycle of dependence and self-destruction. His drug abuse took a toll on his health, his relationships, and his career. Despite attempts at rehabilitation, he was unable to break free from the grip of addiction, and it ultimately cost him everything he held dear. Relationships and Women Lyman's tumultuous relationships with women mirrored the chaos of his personal life. Fueled by his fame and erratic behavior, his romantic entanglements were marked by instability and drama. He married three times over the course of his short life, each union plagued by infidelity, mistrust, and emotional turmoil. His status as a teenage heartthrob and his relentless pursuit of pleasure and excitement led him into numerous affairs, further complicating his already turbulent love life. Women were drawn to him like moths to a flame, captivated by his charm and charisma, but ultimately repelled by the chaos that surrounded him. Despite his magnetic appeal, Lyman's relationships were fraught with dysfunction and disappointment. His inability to commit, coupled with his insatiable appetite for attention and validation, left a trail of broken hearts in his wake. He struggled to form meaningful connections, instead seeking validation through fleeting encounters and superficial flings. Lyman's sudden rise to fame brought with it immense pressure to maintain his success and live up to the expectations of his fans and the music industry. The constant scrutiny and demands placed upon him contributed to feelings of anxiety and inadequacy. Despite his talent and popularity, he struggled with a sense of self-doubt and insecurity, fearing he would not be able to sustain his career or meet the high standards set for him. Financial struggles also added to Lyman's stress and anxiety. Despite his initial success, he faced challenges managing his finances, which led to economic instability and further compounded his mental health issues. The pressure to maintain his lifestyle and support himself and his loved ones added to his already mounting stress. Moreover, Lyman battled personal demons, including substance abuse, which exacerbated his mental health struggles. The use of drugs and alcohol as coping mechanisms to numb his emotions and escape from the pressures of fame only served to worsen his mental state. Substance abuse not only affected his physical health, but also clouded his judgment and ability to cope with the challenges he faced. In the midst of fame, financial troubles, and personal struggles, Lyman grappled with depression, experiencing periods of profound sadness and hopelessness. Despite his outward success and popularity, he suffered internally, feeling isolated and overwhelmed by the demands of his career and personal life. The pressures of fame and the temptations of the music industry only served to exacerbate Lyman's problems, pushing him further into a downward spiral of addiction and self-destructive behavior. His relationships suffered as a result with trust and fidelity becoming casualties of his insatiable appetite for pleasure and escapism. Beyond drug-related offenses, 
Lyman found himself entangled in a web of various other legal infractions. These offenses ranged from minor misdemeanors to more serious charges, each contributing to a pattern of behavior that spiraled his life further out of control. Whether it was disorderly conduct, driving under the influence, or other offenses, each encounter with the law further tarnished his once promising public image. The legal troubles that plagued Lyman's career were not merely isolated incidents, but instead formed a recurring theme throughout his life. These issues became intertwined with his personal struggles and contributed to the erosion of his reputation as a respected musician. While Lyman's talent was undeniable, his inability to navigate the legal landscape effectively hindered his ability to sustain a successful career in the spotlight. Moreover, the constant media attention surrounding Lyman's legal battles only served to exacerbate his downward spiral. Public scrutiny magnified the consequences of his actions, amplifying the impact of each legal misstep on his career and personal life. As a result, Lyman found himself trapped in a cycle of legal woes, from which escape seemed increasingly elusive. Lyman's rapid rise to fame proved to be his undoing. Caught in a whirlwind of excess and temptation, he succumbed to the pressures of his celebrity status, sacrificing his health, his happiness, and ultimately, his life on the altar of fame. On February 27, 1968, tragedy struck as Lyman succumbed to a heroin overdose in his apartment in Harlem. The news sent shockwaves through the music industry and left fans mourning the loss of a talent extinguished too soon. Fans were devastated by the loss of their idol, whose music had captured the essence of youth and innocence in the 1950s. Lyman's vibrant personality and soulful voice had endeared him to millions, and his premature passing left a lasting sense of sorrow among his admirers. Friends and fellow musicians mourned the loss of a prodigious talent, remembering Lyman for his charisma and passion for music. In the aftermath of his death, the music industry grappled with the loss of one of its brightest stars. Lyman's influence on the development of rock and roll and rhythm and blues was undeniable, and his absence was keenly felt. His tragic demise served as a sobering reminder of the perils of fame and the destructive nature of addiction, prompting soul-searching within the industry. To preserve Lyman's legacy, efforts were made to immortalize his contributions to music. Memorials and tributes were organized in his honor, celebrating his groundbreaking achievements and enduring influence. His songs continued to resonate with audiences, ensuring that his legacy lived on through his music. Lyman also inspired numerous documentaries, films, and literature that delve into his life and career. One notable documentary is Why Do Fools Fall in Love? The Frankie Lyman Story, which explores Lyman's rise to fame as the lead singer of the teenagers and his subsequent struggles with addiction and legal issues. This documentary provides insight into Lyman's personal life, his relationships, and the challenges he faced in the music industry. In addition to documentaries, Frankie Lyman's life has been depicted in films such as Why Do Fools Fall in Love, 1998, which starred Lorenz Tate as Lyman. This biographical drama chronicles Lyman's career and the legal battle over his estate following his untimely death at the age of 25. The film offers a dramatized portrayal of Lyman's life, capturing the essence of his talent and the complexities of his personality. Literature has also played a role in preserving Frankie Lyman's legacy, with biographies and memoirs offering insights into his life and contributions to music. Books such as The Boy Who Sang to the World, The Story of Frankie Lyman, by Gay Teresa Johnson, provide a detailed account of Lyman's journey from Harlem to stardom, highlighting his impact on the music industry and the cultural significance of his music. In the years since his passing, Frankie Lyman has been remembered as a pioneering figure in the history of popular music. His tragic death serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the enduring power of artistic expression. Through his music and legacy, Lyman continues to inspire generations of musicians and fans around the world. 
Lyman's untimely death served as a stark reminder of the dark underbelly of the music industry, where exploitation and excess often lead to the downfall of young and vulnerable artists. It shed light on the pressures faced by performers, particularly those catapulted to fame at a young age, and underscored the urgent need for support and guidance within the industry. Despite his tragic end, Frankie Lyman's legacy endures through his timeless music, which continues to inspire and resonate with audiences around the world. His story serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the importance of protecting and nurturing the well-being of artists in an industry fraught with challenges.